Sean Maguire, I say this every time I talk about this book, is a genius. She is a genius. No one can top her. All other authors. People call me over the top, but lately, I prefer being a bottom. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. My name is Megan, if you are new here. Today, we're doing a really exciting video. We are doing my quarterly wrap up. So I do quarterly wrap ups on this channel. I don't tend to do monthly wrap ups, but I'm thinking of bringing them back. I'm thinking of doing a bit of a shake up. Not a good day. I just don't typically do them because I don't typically watch them and so I don't know if anyone would be interested in watching me do a monthly wrap up but I'm kind of feeling like bringing them back so let me know. In this video we go through all my reading stats for the past three months. We talk about my most disappointing, my most surprising, my worst and my top three from those three months. So all the physical books I read in those three months are in these two stacks here. I read a total of 34 books these past three months, which is one less than I read the other quarter, the quarter previous. I'll link the video below where I go through the quarter previous. That doesn't surprise me actually. I have been a bit slumpy the past two months, so I'm glad it was not drastically below what it had been. So of those 34 books, 13 were in April, 10 were in May, and 11 were in June. I also read 9,253 pages and listened to 63 hours of audiobook. I don't count the pages that I read via audiobook in the page count. I read 3,495 pages in April, 3,204 pages in May, and 2,554 pages in June. So I actually thought I had a better reading month in June and read some long books, but apparently not. <laughs> Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. <laughs> but to be fair, I did listen to 29 hours of audiobook in June and only two hours in May. So that's pretty why there is a big difference there. And I listened to 32 hours in April. So still more hours in April. April was a great reading month. If we get into genres, this was actually quite surprising for me this month. I read 12 fantasy books, which always tend to be pretty high for me. I read a lot of fantasy books. I don't know if I'd call it my favorite genre. I don't think I would, but I think that there's something that I recommended a lot. I watch a lot of booktubers that read a lot of fantasy. Then my next popular one was Contemporary with Six, which was really surprising. I'm not really usually a big fan of contemporary books but I think I just read some YA contemporary books to like get me through my slump so that's probably why that's there. Then it was non-fiction with five which I'm really happy with. I always say I want to read at least one non-fiction book a month and so the fact that I've read five I'm really really happy with. Someone's car alarm is going off outside. It's rude. Could you please have quiet in the studio? Quiet please. You. So now it gets a bit surprising. I read two historical books, two horror books, and two thriller books. I thought thriller would be much higher. It was much higher for me last quarter. And then in terms of the ones, I read one graphic novel, one magical realism, one mystery, one poetry, and one sci-fi. So I would usually say that mystery and thriller is probably my favourite genre now, especially murder mysteries. I love old school, a bit of a campy murder mystery. That is definitely my favourite genre, I would say, but I read none <laughs> these past three months, which is really sad, actually. Hopefully I'll read some more in the next quarter. I've got a lot that I have my eye on. And I'm thinking of doing another like reading only murder mysteries for a week video because I need to fit them in somehow. And at the moment, I'm just not fitting them in. I had a really good reading month in terms of ratings. If we go bottom to top, I only read one one star, which is pretty good. However, I did read two two stars and three 2.5 stars. That is quite a lot of low-ish books. I did some rereads of some old favourites that just didn't work out for me, which is sad, <laughs> but they all rated quite low. I then read five three stars. I read four 3.5 stars. So my kind of like three star range is quite a lot of books. That's nine books. I read six four stars, five 4.5 stars and eight five stars. So I'm really happy that over half of my books were four to five star this quarter. I think that's a really, really good split. I'm trying to film! Shut up! Yeah. I was angry. I was angry.
So in terms of audience, I read 14 adult and 20 YA. I didn't read any middle grade or children's, which I had been doing previously. In both quarters, my YA has been higher than my adult. I have a feeling in my next quarter, my adult is gonna be a bit higher. I find it easy to read YA, because let's be honest, YA is easy to read. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? <laughs> Whereas adult is always a bit more of a slog. It's always a bit more hard to get through. It's always a bit more intimidating. But looking at my TBR, I think I have kind of like gotten rid of a lot of the YA that I've been wanting to read. And so I think I'm going to be reading a lot more adult. Going forward, I would like half of my quarters to be more YA than adult and half be more adult than YA. I think that would be a really good split for me personally. So then in terms of author race, and this is the first time I've tracked this, I didn't track it as I was going along. I've tracked it retrospectively like looking back on the quarter and so it wasn't something I was aware of necessarily like paying attention to the degree I should have been and will be going forward. So I read eight books by black authors, three by Asian authors, one by Latinx author, 20 by white authors and one where the race is unknown. I didn't want to like prescribe the race to the author if I wasn't 100% sure. I'm not 100% happy with this but it is actually better than I thought it was going to be before I started logging it. Almost a quarter of the books that I've read were by black authors. Ideally I would like to see that in like the 35 to 40% range. 61% of the books I read were by white authors and I would like to see that at about half or a bit less than half. So I've definitely got improvement to kind of skew those results and look again at like who I'm reading, what I'm reading. I'm not 100% happy with this at all. Like I've got a lot of room for improvement. And I'd also like to prioritize reading like indigenous authors. So that is all the stats I have for you. Like I said, I'm pretty happy with how my reading went, but July, I am gonna be pushing, pushing, pushing to have a great, great reading month. Now let's talk about kind of my most disappointing, worst, etc. For most disappointing, I'm going with Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. This was not it. This was not it. So I had high hope for this book. I was so excited for it. How are you? I'm okay. Yeah. I really loved all of John Green's books when I was like a kid, when I was 13, 12, whatever. And so I had high hopes for this. <laughs> However, it did not deliver at all. <laughs> it was bad, in my opinion. I gave it two stars. It's so unmemorable to me. I read it, I think, at the start of April, so it's a bit difficult for me to tell you why I hated it. However, <laughs> I just found it so one note. The character is so one dimensional. You're promised that like, it's kind of like a murder mystery or a billionaire has gone missing and there's this cash prize. And so she becomes friends, the protagonist becomes friends with the son in order to try and be the one who figures it out. However, it was not that. That was like the first 20 to 30 pages. And then it's just like this boring ass romance between these two characters. And I was just like, oh. Give me the tea, give me the drama. I was promised drama and it was not delivered. This is the tea for today. This is the tea for today. Oh, oh. Oh, it's about to go down to I don't know because of this if I'm gonna read any YA that John Green puts out in the future. For me, I think he would be amazing at writing adult. I would love a new adult or an adult book from him. I think that would be great. I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon, but I think that he's just stagnated in YA. And I think he needs to push himself out of the box and write something that's a bit scary for him to write in order to really produce something great. This was just bad. It was just bad and I don't recommend it at all. The only thing that I think made me give it a two star rather than a one star was that the character in this is sometimes spoken about as OCD. I think John Green said it was OCD. But I saw a lot of mirrors in my relationship with health anxiety that I suffered last summer, last year. I didn't know what health anxiety was or even that it was a thing. And this character's kind of OCD anxiety is very much based around health. And so I thought it was just a really good representation of that, a really helpful representation and a great thing for young people to read and hopefully then it'll be easier for them to recognize the symptoms because obviously when I 
when I started experiencing health anxiety. I had no idea that it was like a thing. I did enjoy that aspect of it. However, it was shite. Get that fire exit door, I'm off. And then for most surprising, I don't think I really had any super surprising books this quarter. I think all the books that I read, I had been really hyped up for and I thought they were gonna be great. So for this, I have gone with Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. I was surprised at just how much I loved this, how much I love Roxane Gay's writing. Her writing, I'm obsessed. I never thought I would love so dearly and be so obsessed with an essay about Scrabble, yet here we are. It's getting weird. My favorite chapter in this, I mean, it's great for all this discussion around gender and race and politics, but I just love the chapter about Scrabble. Like I could read that daily. That could be my morning wake up, is, right? <laughs> is reading about Roxane Gay loving Scrabble. So if you don't know, this is by Roxane Gay and it is about her articulating her difficult relationship with feminism and race and politics as a black woman living in the US. It's so insightful. If you're looking for a more personal approach to like the black woman's experience in America, rather than something more statistical based, because statistical based stuff is important. But what I loved about this was just how personal, how insightful, how raw, how honest it was. I love hearing things from people. I think it makes things come alive for me. I thought this collection of essays was incredible. I read it in like a day. It taught me so many things I didn't know about. It taught me about so many harmful things, so many harmful things in movies and music, etc., that I wasn't educated on. And I just love Roxane Gay and I can't wait to read all of her stuff. For the worst book I read this quarter, it's gonna be the one book I gave one star, uh, and that is Jonas the Beautiful Dead by Eden Maguire. So no one, we don't need to spend long on this because no one will know what the hell this book is. I read it for a rereading my favorite books video that I did. That's so upsetting where it was all the kind of paranormal romance I loved when I was a young girl because of Twilight. Twilight was my literary awakening. <laughs> I read it when I was eight, I think, and I just had to read everything that was vaguely Twilight after that because I loved Twilight so dearly. This is about a girl whose boyfriend has died and she stumbles in on him being like exercised or brought back to life by this cult and she kind of becomes their like detective because oh, this is so convoluted no one cares but there's four kids who have died recently and they're back to get closure and so she's like helping one of the other boys get closure before his year is up and it was just it's so awful it was laughably awful it was so bad <laughs> I can't believe I loved this series so much and I got everyone to read it. I thought it was amazing. On reread it was terrible. <laughs> Just so like badly written. The characters are so bad. The plot, everything about it is so bad. Y'all already know how we feel about this. Shall we move on, Zale? And so now we talk about my top three of the quarter so far. And considering I barely read any mystery or thriller, two of my top three are the two thrillers that I read. So obviously I love thriller. <laughs> I just need to be reading more of it. Let's firstly get into the one that I can't hold up, which is One by One by Ruth, where this is a release that is coming out, I think in October or November. I read an arc of it and I'm so happy I did. So this is about a company called Snoop, which is basically like a combination of Spotify and Twitter. You follow famous people or your friends and you can see what they're listening to at any time and listen in with them so like say they're listening to Beyonce or Beyonce is listening to herself you can listen along at the same time and see what people are listening to and they take like this big corporate holiday to this ski resort and the group it's a very isolated group which I, I love it ah that's history <laughs> There's the group and there's one woman whose perspective we follow a lot. We follow this woman's perspective and the woman who runs the chalet. But the woman who's come on holiday hasn't worked with the company for years and you don't know why initially. And I don't think it really is a spoiler. I think it's something that going forward a lot of people will know why she's there with them. But I don't want to be the one to spoil it in case no one else speaks about it. People start dying. People start getting and you have to figure out who's doing it and why they're doing it and what's going on. I was so tense throughout reading this book. Ruth Ware is obviously a fucking icon when it comes to thrillers. Honestly, 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 truly, 
Honestly, this is me. Honestly, truly, honestly, honestly, honestly. I wouldn't lie to you, truly. Honestly, truly, honestly. I can't wait to read all of her stuff. I'm slowly gonna make my way through all her backlist because both the 10 the key and one by one which are her two most recent ones i've given five stars this is one i think a lot of people are gonna love i think when it comes out towards the end of the year it's gonna be like crazy 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 everyone's gonna be talking about it everyone's gonna be obsessed with it and then the other thriller which was my favorite this quarter was no exit by taylor adams i read this in a reading vlog and was obsessed so this is about a girl called darby who turns into this rest stop during a snowstorm and finds out that in one of the few cars that is also at the rest stop with her there was a girl locked inside of a cage in the car who has obviously been kidnapped again we've got a very closed circle mystery here can you tell that that is my favorite thing <laughs> so they're all stuck in this rest stop together and it, this isn't a who done it I think it's important that you know that going into it. it you know who the, the, again, much earlier than one by one, like you know pretty much straight away almost who not to trust in this. What is so great about this is the suspense. Now, when I say I felt tense in one by one, I felt 50, 100 times as tense reading this. This gave me heart palpitations. This gave me chest pain. Oh God, my heart hurts. <sighs> I could not stop thinking about it. It was terrible and yet so wonderful at the same time. What Darby manages to do, what heroics this girl manages to pull off, I am just obsessed. And then my final favorite book this quarter, which I'm gonna struggle to even explain it vaguely to you, was Middle Game by Sean and Maguire. This is about twins called Roger and Dodger who have been created by this crazy ass alchemist scientist guy and he wants to use them to attain godhood and take over the world. It is about them growing up. You follow them kind of from the start, really, from birth. It's about them growing up separately. They are separated. They're able to communicate kind of telepathically, I guess. It's about them coming together and coming apart throughout their lives. It's about them resisting against the, the hand they've been dealt and then also taking advantage of the hand they've been dealt. It is impossible to describe. Sean Maguire, I say this every time I talk about this book, is a genius. She is a genius. No one can top her. All other authors. People call me over the top, but lately, I prefer being a bottom. No one does it like Sean and Maguire, if we're honest with ourselves. Genius. I love complex, clever books, and this is it. This is it. So if you're in, if you're vibing with that right now, my God, please go pick Middle Game up. I don't know how I'm gonna pick my favorite book of the year. It's gonna be very hard, but Middle Game was definitely up there. So there we have it. That is my quarterly wrap up. I can't believe we're six months through the year. I am very much on course for my goal of 100 books this year. I've read 69. So I don't know if I'm gonna aim for 120. I don't see why not. I think I can definitely do it. I don't think I'll do 150 though. I don't think I'll reach that, but. 120 I'd be pretty happy with so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video let me know down below how the quarter has gone so far for you what your favorite and least favorites are and I will see you very very soon in another video bye